People can't trigger you if you identify your triggers. If you know where your triggers are, no one will trigger you because you'll work on those triggers and you'll no longer have them. And that is a combination of active listening, intuition, good old fashioned common sense. I listen to the conversation in a feeling, seeing, hearing, and intuitive way. All four are running at the same time. So you may say a word, but I felt a different word that I intuitively saw what you were heading for. And then I know a system in which to get you there. There's a lot that happens behind the scenes when I'm just looking pensive. Well, welcome. And thanks for joining me for another episode of Intuition, Your Success Compass. It was shared with me by one of my lovely dearest friends that I have never actually talked about what it's like to work with me. And that's because it's difficult for me to express that. It's so different with everybody. Yes, our goal is how do you want to feel in life? What do you want your life to look like? What's your spiritual connectivity? What is the intention for the the coaching that you're doing with me? And sometimes it's a one-time session, intuitive session, just want a little guidance on where to move. But most of my clients are either on retainer or in a package where I have an ongoing relationship and we get to build and build and build on that and to really beautifully uncover their brilliance and who they are that I already see, but they don't necessarily know. Right. So she had said, you've never done a reading on air. That's true. I need to still do that. And it's just such personal stuff that to ask somebody to do that feels invasive. So that's one of the reasons I haven't done it. The other is I tend to have this perspective of if it's in my head, it's in everybody's head. And that's not entirely true. So what I thought I'd do today is in a short episode, give you a few insights from what other people have written to me and like my response to that. So I have people who have sent testimonials or collected their ideas and said, this is what I get out of it. One of the ones I'm going to read was from uh, a dear friend. She wrote it years ago. I just found it going through my files and thought, this is actually a really good way to give a little insight to what it is that I offer. And she was so impactful in my own healing, our friendship was, that I thought, here's a shout out to Ren and the work we've done together and also a little insight for you. So what I'm going to do is read a sentence she wrote and then give my response to that and then do that a few times along with a couple others. Just as a little synopsis, yes, it's a toot in my own horn. I expect you to toot your own horn. This is me tooting my own horn. I'm good at what I do. I just have not always been the greatest at telling other people what I do, which is why the word of mouth works so well for me. I feel like if somebody's going to refer me to their friends, to their colleagues, to their helpers, that's the ultimate testimonial. However, in this world we live in, We also have to help people understand what it is we offer. So no further ado, here we go. What she wrote was, Vicki Baird is one of the few people in this world who, in her ability to read my soul's path, seems to at times know me better than I know myself. And my response to that, we were doing a bit of call and response, and I'm so grateful I kept this. What I had written was, It's being able to read the soul blueprint that is responsible for me being able to guide people to connecting to their true selves. It is ever evolving. And as the person expands, so does their soul knowledge. Intuitively, to me, it looks like a house plan that you would get from an architect with rooms and doorways and storage spaces. And sometimes those boxes full of things that they don't even know what they put in there. I use that layout to help me understand who I'm working with and their highest self and to help them close the gap, to help you close it between your soul self and your human wiring. Because that integration is why both parts of us are here, why we have a soul and why we're human. It's to work seamlessly together. 
And it does seem like I know you better than you know yourselves because I see the full plan and I don't have emotions in there. I feel empathy and I feel compassion, but I'm not attached to what happened to you in the past. I'm not attached to your beliefs. I can recognize them, honor them, hold them even for you until we can shift them. And that allows me to remain observational and in tune with what your soul self, your high self, your frequency, your field knows about you and is trying to guide you to, I then become a surrogate guide and I step in there and say, okay, this is what I see. This is what it seems like your soul is trying to tell you. And can we then create some realistic systems or process or habits that can support you in you being able to hear this? Because as much as I love what I do, I would love to not be needed in the trauma space and to not be needed in a way of introducing people to themselves, because then that means that everybody already knows themselves. And then we can work on the other fun things like organization and corporate structure. Those are fun. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> so then she wrote, but even when she is way ahead of me and seeing what needs to happen, Next in my journey, she is always right there empathizing with the real feelings and human struggles that my path may include. This is very important to me. When I first started doing intuitive readings, admittedly, I was not in this space. I was always empathetic. That's my wiring. But I was a bit more like, okay, here's the plan. Go do it. Then when that started to get boring, I decided the coaching certification and training was needed. And then the neuropathway certification and training was needed. Because I wanted to help people honor their feelings and to maybe come out of struggle and be more in the flow of life. So the ability to be ahead, literally seeing your movie screen of what's possible to come and then handing you back the power of you have to make it probable. I, in all my brilliance, cannot make things happen for you. You have to do it. And that. I've remained emphatic about that because it's true, but also because I want everyone to feel the joy of accomplishment. So being able to see what's coming is very helpful. It is incredibly helpful to my corporate clients and to the inventors, even though I never really know <laughs> what the thing is. And I often call them doohickeys and thingamabobs, but whomever I'm working with, the inventors, the true creatives app, <laughs> know what to do in the creation of that, the physics of it, the, the bringing it all together. We do have fun doing that. But being able to see the movie screen is helpful, of course, because you get the upcoming events, right? And while I will be truthful in saying that oftentimes I hold back some of the information, it's because if everything is just presented in a true psychic reading sense, I feel like people don't work. I feel like they will often use intuitives and psychics for that reason. Just tell me it's going to be good and then they don't do the work to get there. So the only stuff I hold back on is what I'm told by spirit to not yet, not yet, not yet. And I'm like, oh, but that's what they're working towards. Okay, the coach in me can get on board with that and start to create some systems or some scaffolding, if you will, to help them get to where it is that their highest potential is. At least as a human, we cannot reach our level of best self. So stop it. Stop trying to be your best self. It's not possible with an ego. I love the ego, cute little bugger, but it is not possible to be our highest form of self and still be in physical form. You have to be non-physical, complete all your lifetimes and transcend to the place of being a spirit guide to be the highest form of self. So stop putting that pressure on yourself, okay? Be the kindest form of yourself, be the most present form of yourself, and be the now part of yourself while laying the groundwork for future possibility. Oh, amazing. But your best self, you're never going to attain it. And that just leads to perfectionism and then beating yourself up afterwards, and it's not worth it. So it took me a lot of intentional practice to put away 
the frustration of others needing more time and support to progress. And I will say that that has been the greatest blessing of my life to work on that patience and acquire the understanding that everyone moves at their own pace. And it is brilliant and I love it. That has helped me learn when to push a little bit, when to back off, when to be that place of solace, that place of understanding, and when to say, well, if you want these things, you're going to have to put the effort in. It's not going to work if we're just talking about it all the time. And that does happen in coaching. I will eventually say to someone, this feels like we're just regurgitating and we're just circling around. And I am not of service to you. If that's all we're doing here, go get yourself a therapist. If you just want to talk about things, we are here to move things. We are here to create what is your next experience of brilliance of yourself. Everyone doing it in their own time and understanding that and being empathic to that is why my business is successful. Because I do not coach in the standard way of you said you do this and in one week's time, two weeks time. What do you want to see in five years' time? I don't coach that way. We set up intentions and then, yes, we set goals. And I will check in with you and I will say, but you said you wanted this and you didn't do it. What has changed? Are we moving the goalpost? Are we shifting things? Did you get a 10 yard penalty and we need to look at that? Yes, we're watching a lot of football these days, but helping someone do it in their own time builds the supportive skills needed. And that patience, and some have said, I can't believe how patient you are with me. I would have left me years ago. And I'm like, I know, I know. And I'm not that person. As long as there's still forward move in action, I'm not here to placate. And I have fired people for that. If they didn't want to do the work, if they just wanted to have a bitch session, that's not what I'm here for. So the next thing she wrote was she helps with the nitty gritty work of identifying and clearing the unconscious false beliefs that block the energetic flow of life. Yes, she's a brilliant writer. And I love this description of what I do because it can be nitty gritty and it can be incredibly deep, painful work. Identifying where that pain is sometimes shows up to me intuitively and I'll say to someone, Okay, honey, what happened at nine years old? Because we have to talk about that. You've been carrying it for decades and not knowing you're carrying it, that's fine. But now that we know you're carrying it, can you unburden it? Can you give it to me? Can you throw it out the window? Can we get mad? Can we work through it? The nitty gritty work of identifying where our emotions are being charged is exactly the work of like when I say people can't trigger you if you identify your triggers. If you know where your triggers are, no one will trigger you because you'll work on those triggers and you'll no longer have them. And that is a combination of active listening, intuition, good old fashioned common sense. I listen to the conversation in a feeling, seeing, hearing, and intuitive way. All four are running at the same time. And what happens within my own system is I will see a coalescing of this information. So you may say a word, but I felt a different word than I intuitively saw what you were heading for. And then I know a system in which to get you there. There's a lot that happens behind the scenes when I'm just looking pensive. What then has to happen is in the conversation, and we're revealing. How are you thinking? Like, what are the words you're using? And how are you talking to yourself in a quiet way? And how are you talking to yourself out loud? And we have to get both of those in alignment to be supportive. If that's stuck, we use conscious circuitry. We look at, we center in, we connect the dots, we clear the old wiring, and then we create new wiring. So this is why neural pathway certification was so helpful and all of the study that I've done around that and worked with myself because it creates a new wiring harness to work with because if you do not do that, you're just repeating over and over and over again. So more and more people are asking me about Magic Mind because I've mentioned it here, and I wanted to give an update to you. I have been on it for three months now, 
And I take it because it has all of the components that I was already taking in other supplements, L-theanine, ashwagandha, turmeric, and it puts it all in one little two ounce drink that I think is delicious. And it gives me my B vitamins as a vegetarian. I really have to make sure that I'm getting those in. And all of this being efficient speaks to my coaching heart. But I wanted to give an update. I have noticed less body aches. And I have also noticed that even though my brain wants to be distracted, I can feel the old patterning there. And yes, I do this work and I constantly have to redirect my attention diversity brain. And my brain wants to be diverted and wants to go into old distracted behavior. And there's this underlying health that's saying, nope, that's not necessary anymore. And since I eliminated all of the other supplements I was taking, with the exception of my probiotic, I know it's connected to Magic Mind. And I want others to have that feeling. I want you to know that you can support your own physiological self, which is definitely going to support your emotional self. And you can also then help your frequency to be increased because if our physical body is taken care of, our energy field will then be able to expand even more, which is going to help to heighten your intuition. So that's why I've been taking it. And I wanted to give an update because yes, I am still taking it. I plan to always be taking it because it's the first thing that I have found that didn't make me jittery or give me an upset stomach or create a feeling of frustration because I wasn't getting the results that were promised for the investment. So there's my update for those who have asked. Thank you for asking. I figured I'd cover my bases here. And you can still go to magicmind.co slash intuition and use the intuition code or click on the link in the show notes if, you, if that's easier for you. I know that how oh, I like to follow up on things. And let me know how you're doing on it, because I want to not only support myself, I want to support you in this process. And who doesn't love saying ashwagandha anyway? I had a funny, uh, well, heartwarming and funny. I'll divert for just a moment. I was doing the conscious circuitry with someone who believed in it, but didn't necessarily believe in it. She knew she wanted to change, knew I could do this work, trusted me from work we had done before and set up a session specifically for the conscious circuitry. And she sent me a follow-up a couple months later, about a month later, that said, never underestimate Vicky. <laughs> you know, I am so grateful for the cheerleaders in my life because I appreciate that and feel like it's helpful in me honoring the the work I do bring to the world and what she wrote this is a separate person but this it just came up in my mind so I'm going to read it this is what she wrote that's my mantra for today never underestimate Vicky about three or four months ago I met with you to do a session about rewiring my brain I know that's not the actual title of it but I can't remember it conscious circuitry I know I like the cc because we're ccing your whole self in the process but I want you to know that since I did that session with you, I have seen some really happy changes for me. And the thing I wanted to share with you is not only a thank you for helping me with that, but also the fact that it took probably a couple months before I noticed the impact from that session. That's not unusual. Your brain has to rewire. That takes time. And she's so sweet because she goes on to say, and I thought that might be helpful for other clients of yours who go through that technique and maybe don't think they got anything out of it. I do say that in the beginning, that this may feel like, what did we just do? I don't see the results. And then because it takes you being actually in your life and whatever we worked on for that to come around again, for you to realize. And then she says, maybe it would be helpful to know the results can take time to see. At first, I didn't see any changes and I thought, well, maybe I just didn't do it right or I wasn't a candidate for it. Please know that everyone is a candidate for conscious circuitry. But at least a month after that initial session, something stressful happened in my life, and I realized I wasn't having my usual panicked reaction to it. 
And then again, shortly after that, same scenario. And again, I stayed calm and peaceful and it clicked that it was the brain rewiring that we did together that was helping me. And the calm and peace were just there. I didn't have to summon them. I remember realizing the feelings and stopping in my tracks and smiling. And I think I literally said out loud, well, this is different. I love that so much. And since then, it's happened over and over again. My gut reactions were definitely different and they remain to be different. The feeling that I get in place of that panic and anger and stress load is patience and peace. I feel calmer and less overwhelmed by things I have no control over. I'm sure there will still be flares of that old wiring, perhaps, now and then, but I'm confident I can adjust through them. Thank you yet again for helping me improve and enjoy my life. That feedback meant so much to me. And I was so grateful for her in sharing because it reinforces to me that this work is powerful and that message that I always say, you have to do the work. She did the session and she may have doubted it, but this is the brilliance of the neuroplasticity of our brains. They will go on to help us heal almost in deference to us if we do the work and if we do like cognitive behavioral therapy or conscious circuitry, EFT, EMDR. There's many techniques to doing this. Whatever works best for people, you know, it, whatever works best for you is great. So this process that we worked with is exactly what my other friend was talking about that helping with the nitty gritty identi of identifying and clearing the unconscious false beliefs, because those beliefs are often set up by those experiences we've had in our lives and what we experienced in childhood or what we watched in society or experiences that we had in utero even. I don't know about you, but I don't remember that time. They can be there. And when you use conscious circuitry and then you, whomever working with goes on to apply it and then catches it in action. It is one of those processes that you realize later on, oh, I am calm here. When my husband was passing, one of the doctors said to me, we can't tell if you're this calm or if you're in denial. And I'm like, oh, I am this calm. Trust me, the hurt is there. The pain is there. But my brain knows that this is okay and this is hurtful. I'm Oh, just uh, got to go through the process, but I set up the wiring, not specifically for that reason, but it dang well came in handy. So the another line that my friend had written was, perhaps most importantly, she is slowly but surely changing my outlook on life, helping me really get, not just intellectually, but in the cells of my body, that I am a soul having a human experience and not the other way around. This is the awareness that truly liberates. And that meant the world to me, still does. Because if there's one intention, the main intention that I have, other than having people truly love themselves, it's this one. I want everyone to understand their ongoing soul process is as significant as anything their human self does. I want you to know that your soul is so freaking tickled pink to be here with you and experiencing everything the human goes through because it finds it fascinating. And that's why we're here to learn. As we continue lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, this is all in there and the programming that travels through. And it's freeing for people to realize that you don't have to get it all done in this lifetime. You can't get it all done in this lifetime. You won't. There are so many experiences that you've already had that you will continue to have. And it's necessary and a gift, I feel, to have that awareness that my soul is thrilled to have this human experience. While my human may expand, part of me may not be thrilled in this moment. Okay. One of the things that was so funny is she wrote, I couldn't figure out how to work your sense of humor into this, but it's good to include it. It's a distinguishing feature. 
Oh, and that's a very kind way to say that I often see things in a different way, in a humorous way. And I know that this has been helpful in my work because humor is imperative to the healing process. If we don't have humor, we can't experience joy and optimism and enthusiasm and happiness and feeling empowered and love because life is funny, man. It's meant to be funny. And yes, there are experiences that are painful and that are challenging, but we're supposed to be having fun in this. The soul is giggly and so excited about everything. And if we could just embrace that, that would be good too. It raises your vibration. And it once we loosen up and have fun, it allows for the shifting of beliefs to happen. In the work I do, anyone who's worked with me knows that I love a pun. Oh man, do I love a pun. I love a good dad joke. I love humor in every essence. And I've often used it to bust up energy. I cracked a joke at my mother's funeral because everybody, rightfully so, was so hurting. And she had this incredibly dry, dry, dry sense of humor because she did not want to be the center of, center of attention. But she is very funny. And I felt it, first of all, just came out of my mouth, but I felt like she encouraged me to be like, okay, enough. Let's just laugh about this a little bit. I'm grateful for that because that humor has gotten me through life so much and helped me to connect with my soul that has that joyful feeling about all of this when my human self can be like, what the actual H-E double hockey sticks are we doing? I am so incredibly blessed to work with the people that I work with. I'm grateful that I attract them to me and that spirit brings them into my life because all of you bring joy into my experience and those that are no longer bringing joy are no longer in my experience. Because as a coach, as any professional, you have to be willing to release those that are no longer in resonance with you or no longer want to help themselves or think that simply by giving you money, that's the work that is going to be done. And it's not because I often say that the majority of coaching happens between sessions. We set up the skills and we release the blocks and we shift the beliefs in the sessions and we set the plan in place, but the coaching happens between sessions. And that's why when you buy a package with me or you do a retainer, I am available between sessions because that is needed too. And I'm grateful because it has allowed me to work with people who are spiritually, spiritually aligned, emotionally connected, and really want to make an impact on this world and in this world. And that's important. I work with those that inspire me. And I feel that the gifts that I have been wired with and that I continue to foster and grow are the ones that bring all of these amazing beings like yourself into my life. And my soul is doing its work too. And that's the joyful part. So one other, I wanted to share one other testimonial that I received that touched my heart. And also because I have seen her grow so much over the last three years that we've worked together that my giddiness is off the charts with what she's accomplishing in her heart, in her spirit, and in her physical life. You want to talk about a manifester? And she says, I wanted to work with Vicki because I wanted to work with an intuitive coach that could read energy and who was also practical and grounded in the real world and would have concrete tools to help me. My favorite part of working with Vicki is that I can present a situation to her and she understands what is happening at a deep level that I'm not conscious of, which helps cut through the drama and story and get to the heart of what is really happening. I was surprised at how funny and kind Vicki is. Working with her inspires me to be kind. I would recommend Vicki to anyone who wants to get to the root of things in a container of kindness, practicality, love, and constructiveness. I am much happier in my life and with myself through working with Vicki. Read this because that is a big example of someone who takes what we do in sessions 
and works with it in between sessions. She is learning her own value and she has learned her value and she is now walking in it and speaking of it. And I would even say demanding it in her life. That is just brilliant because exponentially the beautiful work she does and that she helps other people to arrive in in their own lives it's the ripple effect peeps we're doing the ripple effect so thank you for listening to this i hope it gave some insight if you have questions about actual sessions or what it might look like please send me an email and i will do my best to describe more of it and if you're willing to have a session on air contact me i'll do a session with you just know that it's going to be public and we can of course edit because we record ahead of time but I wanted to throw that out there because as <laughs> my friend pointed out, it's a very different experience and people should know about it. So this is me telling you about it. Thank you for listening to this. I am grateful for you and the participation of your energy in my life. And I wish you a, the greatest of weeks and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to this episode of Intuition your success compass. I appreciate you being here. If you would like more information about developing your intuitive skills, removing those blocks, and creating the life that feels the most successful to you, then head on over to vickybaird.com. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D.com. And check out the courses, the groups, and the Spaces app. That will allow you to be part of our community and know about upcoming events and specials. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next episode.